So what's going on brevs, it's your boy Turtle the Black and welcome to the first episode of Brawl University. So today we're going to be talking about some simple tips to help improve your overall craft, gameplay and experience in Brawlhalla. So without delay, let's go ahead and get right on into this. So the first tip I have for you today is to ensure that your connection is as secure as possible. So if you're having trouble with lag in this game, I know it is incredibly prominent issue with the uh, PS4 community on Brawlhalla is people will have hitching connection spikes, uh, lag spikes, it can be all kinds of mess. So one thing I tend to do when I start lagging a little bit is I will go into the network settings and just run a quick connection test. Uh, if you're in a party it'll kick you out of it, just, it's just what happens. But usually right after I do that connection test I jump right back into Brawlhalla and everything is good to go. Um, otherwise, there are some other things that you can do to improve your connection. Um, you can always connect to an Ethernet or a hard line if you have that available. Uh, at the same time, if you're having like severe, severe issues, make sure all the devices in the house are off. Um, family members watching Netflix or streaming something on YouTube, like... If there's nothing you can do about it, oh well, but I mean, those are the things that will take up a lot of the bandwidth that will essentially ruin your experience on the game. But um, if there's anything that you can do to improve your connection, that'll really make a significant difference on your playability. Uh, the second tip I have for you today is to practice the basics as much and as often as possible. So what I mean by that is to really get into the core rule set of the gameplay. So you have a set of threes for everything, basically. For unarmed, you have neutral light, side light, down light, neutral air, side air, down air. Um, I guess technically you can consider them signatures for unarmed. So neutral sig, down sig, side sig. And then of course you have recovery and ground pound. And these apply for every single weapon and unarmed. It is important for you to realize that this consistency, this rule of threes, barring both the recovery and ground pound, will stay consistent no matter what. Through every weapon, through every character that Blue Mammoth Games decides to release for Brawlhalla, this will never change. So make use of training mode, and we'll get into this a little bit later on. Make use of training mode, and go in and learn the ranges of all of these attacks for every weapon, for every character that you decide to play. Get familiar with the ranges, get familiar with how fast they come out, how long it takes for you to be able to put in a different move or the same move, but no spamming. Just make sure you know everything about your character from the ground up. Don't just try to jump in and do some random combo with a new character, no. You need to figure out exactly what they can do first and learn their capabilities. The third tip I have for you today is to stick to a single character before branching out into others. And this is a rule I have for literally every fighting game I play, from Mortal Kombat to Blaze Blue to Brawlhalla. Every single time I play a fighting game, I always make sure that I stick with a single person and learn and master the game from that character's perspective before I decide to pick up anybody else. This will help you learn the very basics of everything, and it'll also improve your craft with that character so you know you have someone to fall back on in case you're just having a really bad day in ranked, or experimentals, or if you just need to show your friends who's really boss, you can pull out your main and you're good to go because you know that character better than anybody else. On top of that, the amount of information and just experience that you get from playing a single character will allow you to transfer that knowledge that you already have into other people. For instance, say you main Nash to start. You have experience with both Hammer and Spear right from the get-go. So if you decide to branch out into Bryn, you know some simple Spear combos, maybe even some advanced Spear combos, and all you really have to do is learn Axe. So that's half of the work done for you. On the other hand, say you decide to learn Sentinel, where your Hammer is completely covered, all you have to do is learn Guitar. Again, that's half of the work already done. So make sure you get comfortable with a single character before you start experimenting with other people. It will be a lot easier to get better with everybody else once you know how to get one weapon or two weapons down. The fourth tip I've got for you today is to practice your recovery often. A lot of issues I see 
um, just in matches that I play, and it applies to me as well. Uh, but and when I play with my friends, when I play online, doing ranked, people get gimped constantly. And if you don't know what a gimp is, it's basically when you are prevented from getting back on stage because somebody is guarding the edge, and you basically run out of jumps and fall to your death really early on in the stock. Getting gimped is quite possibly one of the most heartbreaking things that can occur to you in a fighting game, at least in a platforming fighter, it won't happen in a game like Mortal Kombat, but getting gimped sucks, it really does, and the way to get around that is by practicing your recovery, finding different ways, different avenues to take to recover, like you can throw your weapon at the enemy, make sure they can't get to you in time to ground pound you, um, you can time your jumps and your recovery and your dodge a little bit differently, try moving away from the wall instead of just going right towards it, but the biggest thing about recovering is that you don't want to rush it, because everybody kind of in their subconscious thinks, okay, he's got to recover, he's either going to come from above or below, depending on where you hit them to. So if you're coming from below, the immediate response is, I'm going to go in for the ground pound. So if you wait a little bit longer and try to bait out their ground pound, you can get above them and you can recover just fine. I urge you strongly to practice different ways of recovering so that way you can better get back on stage and continue the fight without getting gimped incredibly early on and completely ruining the match for yourself. Now for tip number five, make a frequent and impactful use of the training mode. It's there for a reason, alright? A lot of people I know don't even know it exists, but it is there and it's there for you to get better. I spend probably anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour in training mode before I even decide to do an experimental 1v1 or free-for-all or 2v2s, and even longer if I decide to do ranked that day. The training mode is quite possibly the greatest asset in order to improve a Brawlhalla. It will allow you to customize the AI to do what you need them to do, uh, you can make them dodge, jump, run around, fight you even. If you need to, you can control the AI, mirror your own moves, like, it's incredibly in-depth and very, very useful, and I find that the more people use training mode and get familiar with the way it works and how it helps them improve on their combos, their reading, and just overall, every single aspect of the game can be improved on just by making an effective use of the training mode. So I strongly encourage anybody that's trying to get better at Brawlhalla to use it as much as possible, and to use it in a great way. Not just jump in there and do a couple things, a couple little diddles here and there, and then just bail out and just go get wrecked by somebody. No. You need to make a good use of it because it's there for you to improve. So this leads right into tip number six, is to set up a training regimen. So for example, um, my training regiment for ranked day would be to do 100 Russian Mafias, um, 25 Scythe Ladders, 25 Scythe Ladder Extends, 25 Scythe Giga Ladders, 25 Pyramids, and 25 Scythe Storms. Um, 25 blaster combos, 25 spear ladders, 25 spear chases, 25 sword Russian mafias, 25 sword slams. You get the idea. It's a lot of work. But I spend anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour, or even longer if I really need to. I set the AI to timed, um, position reset, damage reset, you put it right in the middle of the stage. I always practice on Shipwreck Falls. Uh, because it's just a flat stage, makes it easy, really easy, no extraneous variables that'll mess your combos up or whatever it is that you're trying to do. And you just go to town and you just keep working and working and working. And here's something that an old teacher of mine taught me uh, many, many years ago, is that you don't practice until you get it right, you practice until you know you can't get it wrong. That really makes a difference between a professional and an amateur, and that's the kind of stuff that you need to be going for if you really want to be good at this game. So the seventh tip I have for you is to play against AI and friends often. Um, you learn a lot of different things from the AI. You might learn a different combo that you've never even thought of before. And watching the AI is really important because they're programmed to win. 
They won't always do that. I mean, the Brawlhalla AI has been particularly difficult. But they do know some very simple combos. Like, I learned two or three bow combos just from fighting against an AI Ember. I learned how to do certain things just from watching them and from picking up certain uh, moves and combos that they just already knew how to do. And that really helped me improve with my own gameplay. And the other thing is that playing with friends can also teach you quite a bit, uh, especially if they're higher ranked. I have about 30 or 40 friends on Steam that I play with constantly, about 10 of those are diamonds. They wipe the floor with me, yeah, but I mean, I still learn a lot and I ask them, hey, what can I improve on? Uh, what did I do wrong here? How did you do that? Asking those questions will really help you just get better with your overall gameplay. And it'll help you kind of change your mindset, especially if you find yourself kind of making the same mistakes over and over again. Playing against another player that can give you that immediate feedback can help you really learn what it is that you're doing wrong and how to take the steps to improve upon that. The next tip I have for you is to experiment with all the different game modes that Brawlhalla has to offer. Um, something that I found really interesting and also really useful is that the Snow Brawl and Dodge Bomb game modes are very impactful for practicing aiming and for practicing getting used to recovering with uh, items and not just weapons. Um, something to keep in mind, when you have an item like a mine or a bomb, you cannot use your recovery while you have it active. So you only have your two jumps if you fall off the stage, of course. If you're on the stage, you still have your normal three. But if you're off stage, you only have your two jumps and your dodge, so that completely changes the way you need to approach your recovery. So I greatly urge you, if you want to practice throwing weapons um, and just your aim in general, practice on dodge bomb, practice on snow brawl, put the AI up to like 8, and just have fun. They're fun game modes in general, but it also gives you a lot of experience with using projectiles and trying out different trajectories to try to hit your enemy. It's incredibly useful. For tip number 9, um, it's more of a relaxing tool um, to take deep breaths and write notes on your performances whether you win or lose and to take breaks. Fighting games are inherently known for being frustrating to players because you're fighting against another person and it's basically just who's better and if you lose you're like dang I suck but that's not always the case there are many 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 different variables that go into a fighting game especially if you're fighting online Three, lag two, can be a big one, factor in that which is why you should always make sure you're as stable as possible but attitude emotions just generally how you're feeling that day can also impact and influence uh, the way you perform so it's important that you Take some time off from the game if you're not doing so well. Go get a snack, read a book, get laid, do whatever you need to do. Just get back into the right mindset to play. You cannot win if you're not in the right mindset. If you're angry, you're going to play angry. You'll be predictable, and then you'll just get even more angry. You'll want to quit the game, throw your controller, do whatever it is that people do when they're mad. It'll just get worse. So take breaks and take deep breaths, because... At the end of the day, it's just a game, and it's not going to hurt you, and those people aren't going to hurt you, it's just a game. Which leads us right into my final tip, is to have fun. And video games, at the most base level, are inherently built for people to have fun. They're supposed to be an enjoyable experience, and if you're not enjoying yourself, you're not going to want to play it. And if you don't play the fighting game, you're not going to get better. You have to play these games in order to get better. You won't learn just by watching videos or listening to me or anybody else talk about it. You have to actually go out there and try it for yourself. And if you don't enjoy the game to begin with, then you're not going to want to put in the kind of time to actually improve. And if you just expect to improve over time just because you're learning different things or you're hearing different things or you're seeing different things but you never try it for yourself and you don't put in the hours and the blood and the sweat and the tears to really get up there, it's not going to happen. It's just a fact. So, above all things, or well, anything else, for any game, Brawlhalla, Blaze Blue, Mortal Kombat, Call of Duty, whatever it is, whatever that you want to improve at, make sure you're having fun first. 
I guess that'll be all for today. Um, be sure that you have uh, notifications turned on for this channel. I will be uploading more frequently uh, very, very soon. Um, expect a new OP video coming out uh, relatively soon as well. Um, and there will be a, quite a few different channel things going on. I'll be posting updates soon about what I've got planned for the future of not only my channel but for Brawl University. Um, I'll be making a Discord chat fairly soon as well. If you want to join that, I'll post a link in the description and the description for all future Brawl Hollow videos and Brawl University videos. Uh, yeah, but just stay tuned for more stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.